Now let's go into the index. So we'll show you uh, what we're doing here. I'm actually gonna show you the form first. So down here we have our kind of standard HTML. So we have our, our HTML, which is giving us our display over here. And then we're doing a little bit of processing at the top. So this form's actually gonna submit right back to itself. Okay, so we do do a little bit of PHP processing, processing at the top. If you wanted to submit to another page, you could take this, uh, the, basically this stuff that's right here, and you could put it in that other page, and then just make sure that you set your form action to the URL of that page, whatever that page is. All right, but here we're just having it submit back to itself. We'll get over this PHP here in just a second, but I just want to cover the HTML real quick. So. Again, you can see a standard setup. We have our HTML, we have our head area with our title tags. We have some style sheets. Uh, these are obviously included in the source code. So uh, these kind of set up the style of it. If you wanted to change the styling, you could go into these and do that. We're including Bootstrap as well here for some of the, the styling as well. We have inside our body tag, the main thing is then our form, our actual form. So. Uh, you can see that we have just a few inputs here. So here we have our name. You know, we have our input here. Uh, it's a type is text. The name of it is name, has a placeholder. And then in the value block, we're doing this uh, validation, a little bit of this validation. So this is a PHP function we'll go over. And this essentially makes it so if I come over to this form and let's say that I just submit it without entering anything, okay, I'm going to get an error and... Actually, if I enter something real quick, say I enter something and then I get some sort of error, you notice that value is still there. So I'm not losing what I've already wrote if I get an error. Okay, so that's that's important. So that's what this essentially allows you to do. And we'll go over that PHP function. So you can see that all these form areas are really pretty much the same. They, they're just the name, the email, still uses that echo validate input. And then the text area, this is a text area, so it's a little bit different HTML, but it does the same thing. You can see if we go this way, we have echo validate input message text area, right? So uh, in terms of the PHP is all, all pretty straightforward. So that's the HTML. It's kind of really just a standard form with this one kind of special thing in here uh, that it helps us keep hold of our data if we have some sort of error. All right, then you'll notice above it, I have this kind of block right here. And in this, what we're doing is we're checking to see if there's any errors. So up in our PHP code, we're setting errors if we get any back from our processing and I'll, I'll go through that. But here we're checking to see if we have any and if we have any, then we are displaying some sort of message. So let's say I do, let's get rid of this message over here and let's add in the math and let's submit the form. Um, and actually I need to do my email address here. So let me just do testing. Let's get rid of these. Let's do our math. So the, the math check and the email check are kind of what I would call standalone checks. So what, what that means is if, if it, we check the math first, if the math is wrong, we don't do anything else. And so if the, if they don't have the math, right, we're not going to show any other errors or anything. We're just going to show them, Hey, your math is wrong. Then after we check the math, we check the email to make sure the email address is valid. If the email address is not valid, again, we just stop right there. We don't do anything. We don't collect up the rest of the errors. We don't do anything else. We just stop right there and say, hey, your email address is invalid. Okay. So those two are kind of standalone checks. If they're wrong, they're just going to, it's just going to stop at that error. The, the name and the message, if those are empty, then we actually collect up the empty fields and we'll display them. So I have my email address, I have my math, but I haven't entered the name or the message. So if I submit this form, then you'll see it says, please enter your name, please enter your message. Okay, so that's what this section here is doing. Um, and, and all it's doing is, is this errors right here from PHP is an array. And so we're just imploding the array and we're adding some paragraph tags to the front and back of it. Um, and, and then displaying that message and styling it up. So what this looks like in actual code is just, you can see it's two paragraph tags. Okay. So that's what this implode statement does here. 
it breaks apart the array and puts it into a string and adds essentially these to the front and back. Okay. Now you'll notice that what comes first actually is the ending paragraph tag. The, the reason we do that is because we're wrapping that whole implode statement in a paragraph tag. So when it, it implodes the first item in the array, so the first item in the array is please enter your name, this is already there. It implodes and, and puts in, please enter your name and then adds a paragraph tag to the end of that and then starts a new paragraph tag and then loops back to please enter your message. And again, so it already has the starting paragraph tag and now adds this ending paragraph tag to it adds this one back here, and then we close it all with this closing paragraph tag. So what you get is you get a valid set of paragraph tags here, okay, for, for that loop. And you can see we got one here, and we got one here. All right, it, so one of those things that just kind of works, it's a little bit of a trick for the paragraph tags, but I don't want to get too bogged down on that, uh, because I want to really want to get into the PHP, and there's quite a bit to get through. Hopefully you're enjoying the course up to this point. Now, if you'd like to keep going and finish it off, all my courses are available on Skillshare. And not only will you get access to all of my courses, but over 20,000 others on web design and web development, freelancing, graphic design, online marketing, and more. And it's all for just 10 bucks a month. And as a teacher on Skillshare, I can give you a two-month free trial. You'll get full access to the entire library of courses and you can cancel at any time before the trial is up and you'll never be charged a penny. To learn more and to start your two-month free trial, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare.